Good morning, and welcome to our liturgy. Today's readings focus on the joy and hope that is knowing and believing in Christ. In the first reading, Isaiah tells us to let go of the darkness of the past and see the new life that God offers us. The reading from Philippians reminds us again to let go of the past and to seek the bright future Christ promises us. Finally, John's Gospel tells of Jesus' call for forgiveness as he liberates the woman in the temple from her sin and invites her to a new life. Our celebrant is Father Tom Ryan. Our homilist is Monsignor Ron Bill. I'm Tom Kennedy as the proclaimer of the word. With the flu season upon us, we remind those who are not feeling well to please refrain from receiving communion from the chalice. Also, during this time, everyone is asked to refrain from shaking hands at the sign of peace. Instead, offer the sign of peace verbally. A reminder to please silence your cell phone. Now stand and as we begin our celebration of the Eucharist. Good morning. Please join in singing our entrance hymn in Christ Alone, number 405, in Christ Alone, number 405. celebration as we gather and continue our season of Lent journeying towards Easter. Certainly a very special welcome to any visitors who are joining us in prayer today. As a family of faith, we come together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. As we enter now into this sacred mystery of our faith, we pause for a moment of silence, humbly asking our God's mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. 
Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We do have children's liturgy this morning, if the kids want to come up. Come and join the circle. Come and take my hand. Come and join the circle. Come and be my friend. Gather round and see what the world can be. Come and join the circle. Come and share God's word with me. Get a hold off here. <laughs> a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way, in the wasteland rivers. Wild beasts not honor me, jackals and ostriches, for I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The words to our psalm are, with the Lord there is mercy, and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry, O Lord, hear my voice, hear my pleading voice. 
from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his suffering by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting to what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead. I continue my pursuit toward the goal the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Serve me, follow me, says the Lord, and where I am, my servant will also be. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him. He sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, This woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when he continued asking him, he straightened up and he said, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. In response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one been condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. And then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. 
go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. My friends, the gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. During the last few weeks, we've been inundated with basketball, basketball, colleges, uh, uh, high school, grammar school, you name it. Uh, it's been pretty good. Uh, the, you know, the, the caliber of the, of the players is certainly wonderful. But one of the, uh, one of the teams uh, who had won almost all of their games was was interviewed by the press. They asked him, uh, what do you attribute your success to? How come you're here? And so he said, well, he says, we, we come to the game and we, we play as hard as we can. We do everything we can to overpower the other team. And he said, so we become champions. Well, I guess that's the way it happens. One team beats another one. Uh, there's always a winner, there's always a loser. It doesn't mean that one team is that much better. M many of the games are uh, won by a couple of points. But this coach thought that his team was great because he had won all the games. Anyway, the theme of power is today's sacred scriptures highlighting the various aspects of God's power. Isaiah begins with a show of the enormity of God's creative power and how he uses this to help his people, his chosen people. St. Paul adds his own take on God's uh, power. He sees God's power through the knowledge of Jesus. For, Je for Paul, Jesus is his absolute greatest happiness. Paul was consumed with love for our Jesus. But then the gospel is highlighting uh, our Lord's power to forgive sins by uh, taking the sin away from this woman. This woman who was brought there in front of them, everybody, for everyone to see, everybody to, to laugh at. Our Lord didn't think it was funny at all. He went down and he rode, a, rode in the sand or wherever he was. I don't know what he wrote. But some of the theologians feel that he wrote the word, just a word like mercy or love. I'm sure these would have been in our Lord's mind. At first glance, the scene of Jesus with this woman caught in the sin seems like a simple act of compassion, but it's more. It's an act of God's power to forgive. And of course, this is what gave him the most trouble with the, the Pharisees who didn't believe that he was the son of God and that he could not forgive sins. But Jesus knows that sin is, uh, sin's control and destructive force on us is very difficult to, to overcome. He forgives and he brings grace and power to that person so that they will be able to overcome sin in the future. God knows what he's doing and that Jesus is one who loves us very much. The forgiving power of, of God is so great, there's nothing we can do, nothing wrong that we would, we would even think about doing that God would not forgive. God loves us so much. The, in all of God's situation, the power of God is his choice to love rather than to punish. And his greatest power is when he does forgive. God's power, he has powers to do everything, but the greatest power and the show of his power is when God forgives us for our sin. And God is there for all of us at all, all the time of our lives to forgive us our sins, to show us how much he loves us. The woman caught in sin is something to teach us this morning. We see Jesus share, he shows no sign that he is interested in playing the game of the Gentiles. His concern is the same as God's, to mend what is broken. Jesus does not deny the woman is a sinner. He doesn't say that, oh, this is no sin. 
Instead, he invites those who are looking on and us today to consider our own sinfulness, to see where we stand. Then our Lord says, is no one there to condemn you? She says, no one. He says, neither do I condemn you. God does not desire punishment, but restoration. Her life is spared and into an ever greater new life with God. Yes, go and sin no more. Today as we come together, there are only two weeks left in, in Lent before, before Easter. We are anticipating Palm Sunday when our Lord enters Jerusalem and the people are putting the palms and even their own clothes for, the, for our Lord to ride upon. And in our preparation before entering into the Paschal Mystery, we begin with the ancient prayers of the Jewish people when they ask for help from God. When they ask for mercy, they ask for forgiveness for their sin. And during this time, it's our, it's our way of showing God that we are asking for his forgiveness. We are asking for his love. During this time of of the last two weeks of Lent, we, with the, with the Jewish people, we pray. We long for the moment when the cup poured out in the new covenant will be fully realized in our world. But in the meantime, we welcome into our communities the refugees fleeing violence and hatred in our own day. And when they find a home with us, the ancient longing for justice will be complete. This is our hope. This is our prayer. And together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Conscious of our own sinfulness and the need to ask for forgiveness, we now turn to our loving God in prayer. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of the church, that we may be conscious of our baptismal call and be ministers of Christ's service and forgiveness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For our nation and all who make our laws, that the legislation which they pass may protect the rights of all people, especially the poor and unborn, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. <coughs> For our parish community, that the celebration of our 150th anniversary will remind us to keep in prayer the sacrifice and dedication of those who have gone before us, and that we may faithfully continue the mission of our church, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For immigrants and refugees, that they may be treated with respect and dignity, and that they may find new beginnings and warm welcomes, 
we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For vocations to the priesthood and religious life, and for all those preparing for the sacrament of marriage, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and their caregivers, that they will know our prayerful support, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, that they may live in union with God, especially Richard Austin, brother of Tina Kelly, Fred Krenzer, husband of Patricia Krenzer, Anthony Orioli, husband of Jean Orioli, Joan Mulcahy, mother of Pat DeMello, Bernadette Fromelich, sister of David Fromelich, John Hines, father of Karen Hans, and also John Field, whom we remember at this Mass, we pray. Lord, Lord. Almighty and eternal God, listen to our prayer. May we prepare to celebrate the joy of Easter with minds and hearts renewed. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, Be Not Afraid, number 431. Be Not Afraid, number 431. shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak no words in foreign lands, and all will understand. Friends, let us pray that our sacrifice of bread and wine and our very lives this day may be acceptable gifts to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify us by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, 
to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed in the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, protector of the Holy Family, with the apostles, the martyrs, 
St. Mary and Cope, and all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, with all the clergy, the religious, all the faithful you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you, whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but rather on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The friends, may that peace of our Lord be with you always. With Let us offer each other that sign of Christ's mm -hmm. peace. <coughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word of my soul. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
are very pleased to let you know that we have hired two, our new youth ministers here at IC. Our new middle school youth minister is Rhiannon Waddell, and the new high school youth minister is Stephanie Anchel. Both Rhiannon and Stephanie are very active with their families here at IC, and we hope you'll take a moment to welcome them to our staff. I don't think either are here this morning. Stephanie, Stephanie, can you stand? Our high school youth minister. So we're really excited to get things going once again, and we appreciate their assistance with that. As we announced last weekend, we are changing to a new electronic giving system for those who donate their Sunday offering through a credit card or a debit to your savings or checking account. You should have received a letter from us. If not, it, you should be, get it by Monday. Um, but it's important that you review the information. It'll just take a minute to reset it to the new system. We cannot do that legally or for security reasons. So please do that. If you have any trouble at all, just call the parish office. This Tuesday is our final evening Mass for Lent at 7 o'clock. Father Joe Marina of Lemoyne College, who often assists us on weekends, will be the celebrant. The liturgical ministry sign-up list for Holy Week and Easter is over in the rectory vestibule. The ushers list is in the ushers room. We hope you'll offer your assistance, especially during Holy Week and Easter, and particularly for servers. That Holy Week is the break, so a lot of the families will be away. So if you're going to be here, we hope you will help us out. If you did not par sign up to participate in the parish service day on Saturday, April 27th, and you're still interested, please call the office this week. They really need to get those groups together. We've had a wonderful turnout. I think it's just about 200 people, adults plus children, going out to three venues morning and afternoon on Saturday, April 27th. For the older people who are not able to help out, some wanted to make a donation. There are envelopes at the entrances and that will be used to help build the new playhouse that we'll do at Brady Faith Center. If there's any money left over, that will be distributed between the three charities. As you see, the Boy Scouts are having their annual Easter sale. As always, please take a bulletin after Mass for further information regarding the need for volunteers, again, to help us deliver Easter flowers to our homebound, the annual IC Easter egg hunt on Easter Saturday, and the annual concert to bene benefit Emmaus Health Services which is held here each year. Our final announcement regarding the IC School Annual Blue and White Night will be given by two of our students, Mia Arcuri and Julie Zepp. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Mia Arcuri, and this is Julie Zepp, and we are sixth graders at Immaculate Conception School. We are here to invite you to a very special event on Friday, May 17th, IC School will be hosting its 13th annual Blue and White Night right here in Dwyer Hall. This adults-only night includes an amazing catered dinner, desserts, drinks, music, and the always popular live and sound auctions. Did you know that IC School is celebrating its 60th birthday? In honor of this very special occasion, we are offering the tickets for Blue and White Night for just $60 per couple or $30 individually. Our parents would love to see our IC parishioners at the event, not only to join you all in the celebration of our beloved school, but to thank each of you personally for supporting the school on a weekly basis. There is a flyer in this week's bulletin with more information about the event and sponsorships. This annual event depends on the generous donations from our school and parish community, and all proceeds go back to the school for improvements, technology, and financial aid. Thank you for listening. The families of IC School look forward to welcoming you at Blue and White Night. Our thanks to Julia and Mia. They've done a nice job all morning, and certainly that's a great celebration, so we hope many of you can join us. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go announce the Gospel of the Lord. Have a great day, everyone.
And please join in singing our recessional hymn, Lead Me, Lord, number 630. Lead Me, Lord, number 630.